Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Ted Kennedy and the Chappaquiddick incident? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll go through the background of this case, move to the timeline of the Chappaquiddick incident, and offer my analysis. Edward Kennedy was born on February 22, 1932. He went by the name Ted. He was the youngest of nine siblings. One of his brothers was John F. Kennedy. Ted Kennedy attended 10 different schools by the age of 11. He was considered a mediocre student. He managed to graduate from high school with B's and C's. He went to Harvard College. He was expelled after repeatedly cheating, but he was told he could reapply in a year. Ted enlisted in the Army in 1951. He was discharged in 1953 and returned to Harvard. He did better this time, graduating in 1956 with a bachelor's degree in business and government. But his grades were not good enough to get into Harvard Law School, which was his goal. He would end up going to the University of Virginia School of Law. While he was there, he was arrested for reckless driving and driving without a license. Ted married in 1958 and graduated from law school in 1959. He worked as an assistant district attorney in Massachusetts for a while and then successfully ran for the U.S. Senate in 1962. Ted was in an airplane crash in 1964. It was a private plane. He survived, but he suffered chronic back pain for the rest of his life. This takes us to the Chappaquiddick incident. On July 18, 1969, Ted was hosting a party on Chappaquiddick Island in Massachusetts. This is on the eastern end of Martha's Vineyard. Ted's main reason for being in Martha's Vineyard was to sail in a regatta. The party was being held at a house called Lawrence Cottage. In attendance were a number of people, including six young women. They were referred to as the Boiler Room Girls. They had assisted with Robert Kennedy's 1968 presidential campaign. Robert, of course, was assassinated during the campaign. All six women were in their 20s and single. Ted Kennedy would later claim that a 28-year-old woman named Mary Jo Kopechny asked him for a ride back to her hotel. According to Ted, this was at about 11.15 p.m. Ted asked his chauffeur to give him the keys to his 1967 Oldsmobile Delmont 88, which Ted did not normally drive. Ted claimed he was going to drive to Edgartown Ferry. The last ferry departed the island at midnight. What's interesting about this story is that Mary Jo left her hotel key and her purse at the party, and she didn't tell anyone she was leaving with Ted. A police officer said he saw a dark four-door sedan driven by a man with a woman in the passenger seat in front of him at 12.30 a.m., like the car drove right in front of his police vehicle. He thought they were lost, so he approached the vehicle, but when he was still about 25 to 30 feet away, the driver put it in reverse and backed up toward him before engaging a forward gear and taking off in a cloud of dust. The officer remembered that the license plate contained two sevens and the letter L. The plate on Kennedy's vehicle was L78207. Ted Kennedy claimed that he left the party, drove for about a half a mile, then took a wrong turn on a dirt road. He did not see that there was a bridge in front of him until it was too late. He slammed on the brakes and lost control of his car. The vehicle traveled off of the bridge into the water below. This particular bridge did not have a guardrail. The car was resting on its roof in a tidal pond. The exact time of the collision is not known because there are two different stories, Ted's version and the police officer's version. According to Ted, he was able to escape the vehicle, but Mary Jo could not. He said he called her name several times from the shore and attempted to reach her in the water seven or eight times. He then took a break for about 15 minutes before walking back to Lawrence Cottage. This trip took about 15 minutes. Ted passed four houses where he could have requested assistance. He claimed the lights were not on. The occupant of the closest house reported her light was on. When Ted arrived at Lawrence Cottage, the party was still going on. Instead of telling anybody about what happened, instead of reporting the incident, he spoke to just two people as he sat in the back seat of a car in the driveway, his cousin Joseph Gargan and his aide, Paul Markham. 
These two men were also lawyers, like Ted. Joseph then drove Paul and Ted to the crash site. Joseph and Paul unsuccessfully tried to rescue Mary Jo. The three men were talking. Joseph and Paul wanted to report the crash. Ted Kennedy reacted to this by jumping into the channel and swimming 500 feet to Edgartown. He went to his hotel and collapsed on the bed. Joseph and Paul returned to Lawrence Cottage. They told people that Ted Kennedy had gone for a swim back to his hotel and that Mary Jo was probably at her hotel. At around 7.30 a.m., Ted had a conversation with somebody at the hotel. He never mentioned the crash. About a half hour later, two people who were fishing found Ted Kennedy's Oldsmobile in the water. They made their way to the house that was closest to the crash site, something Ted had failed to do. The occupant of that house notified the police at 8.20 a.m. After the police arrived, 10 or 15 minutes later, they called for a scuba diver to come out. The diver arrived at 8.45 a.m. and pulled Mary Jo's body from the vehicle. After Ted Kennedy heard that the crash site had been discovered, he made his way to the police station, arriving there at about 9.50 a.m. He admitted that he was the driver of the Oldsmobile found in the water. Ted provided a written statement to the police, which essentially said that he was unfamiliar with the road, went the wrong way, and drove off the bridge. He claimed he didn't remember how he exited the vehicle and had not fully realized what happened until the morning, like he was confused and disoriented. Mary Jo's death was ruled an accidental drowning. No autopsy was performed, but a blood sample indicated that her blood alcohol content was 0.09%. The diver who recovered Mary Jo's body believed that given the way the vehicle was positioned, she had access to an air pocket, which ran out of air, meaning her cause of death was actually suffocation. On July 25, just seven days after the crash, Ted pleaded guilty to leaving the scene of an accident causing bodily injury. There was a sense that he was being rushed through the system in order to avoid a more serious charge. He was sentenced to two months in prison, but the sentence was suspended. The judge said Ted, quote, has already been and will continue to be punished far beyond anything this court can impose, unquote. That same day at 7.30 p.m., Ted Kennedy delivered a speech on TV about the incident. It went on for a while. Here are the main points. He explained how his wife wasn't with him at Chappaquiddick Island because she wasn't feeling well. He was not involved in any immoral conduct with Mary Jo, he also denied driving under the influence. Ted said that his behavior after the crash made no sense at all. Physicians told him he had a concussion and was in shock. His failure to make a report immediately was indefensible. He was overcome by many emotions like grief, fear, doubt, exhaustion, panic, confusion, and shock. Ted Kennedy would go on to be elected to the Senate seven more times. He was still a senator when he died on August 25, 2009. He was never charged with manslaughter, even though there was enough evidence for an indictment. Mary Jo's family never sued Ted Kennedy, but he did pay them over $90,000 personally, and his insurance company tacked on another $50,000. Now moving to my analysis. This case is often cited as an example of how the rich and powerful can escape consequences. I think that is exactly what this case is about. Many of Ted Kennedy's claims were comically nonsensical, and or deceptive. Just a few examples. Earlier on the day of the crash, Ted had crossed that fateful bridge two times, yet somehow he couldn't safely cross it later on. Ted claimed he didn't notice that he had turned off of a paved road onto a dirt road. He was driving to the ferry, even though it had already left, according to the timeline, based on the police officer's observation of his vehicle. He claimed that he never encountered the officer. It's clear Ted was lying. Ted claimed that he told Joseph and Paul not to tell anyone else because he was afraid that other women would make their way to the scene of the crash, jump in the water, and drown. So really, Ted was just trying to save lives because this is what typically happens when there's an accident. A car drives into a pond and everybody in the area just jumps right in there. By his logic, a single drowning at a public pool would always result in a mass casualty event. Ted pretended that he was dazed and confused after the incident. He didn't even know how to contact the police. Yet somehow, he managed to make 17 phone calls to friends and political aides from the time of the crash until he made his way to the police station. 
One reason Ted gave for not reporting the incident was he thought Mary Jo may have survived, like she swam out of the vehicle and made it to shore. This doesn't seem to fit with his many rescue attempts. It seems clear that Ted Kennedy was lying to cover up some bad act. What really happened in this case? Let's take a look at some of the more popular theories, as well as a few that are unconventional. Theory number one, Ted exited the Oldsmobile, Mary climbed into the driver's seat, and drove off of the bridge. It's not clear why she would do this. Maybe she saw it as a more acceptable alternative to spending any more time with Ted Kennedy. Theory number two, Ted Kennedy murdered Mary Jo and staged an accident. This would explain why he didn't report the incident quickly. He was stalling for time. Theory number three, Ted Kennedy was actually with another woman when the car went off the bridge. The police found a purse belonging to Rosemary Keough in the Oldsmobile. Perhaps he was with her. Mary Jo died because she was asleep in the back seat. Theory number four, Ted Kennedy killed Mary Jo in a drunk driving incident and he was trying to buy time to sober up so he could escape responsibility. Which theory do I think is correct? I think theory number four is correct. The crash is consistent with impaired driving. Here's what I believe happened that evening on Chappaquiddick Island. Ted and Mary Jo had both been drinking. Ted wanted some quality time alone with Mary Jo for the purposes of romance. He became frightened when the officer spotted them and took off quickly. After all, Ted was married, and being caught with Mary Jo could have created a scandal. Ted ended up driving off of the bridge. Ted's only objective was preserving his political career. He did not care about Mary Jo. Her death was only significant because it threatened him. He took every measure to escape ownership of his crime. I believe Ted Kennedy was actually guilty of manslaughter, but he was able to beat the system. Many people believe that Ted Kennedy would have had a chance of being elected President of the United States someday if it were not for the Chappaquiddick incident. He actually did pursue the Democratic presidential nomination in 1980, but he failed to make a meaningful response during an interview when he was asked why he wanted to follow in his brother's footsteps. It appeared as though Ted hadn't really thought too much ahead. He was defeated by Jimmy Carter. His campaign disintegrated along with his hopes of being president. Despite his failure to achieve his goal, he had a long career in politics. He would spend time delivering impassioned speeches on the Senate floor when he should have been spending time delivering an impassioned cleaning effort on a prison floor. Such is the nature of Ted Kennedy's arrogance. He never really understood why Mary Jo's death was a big deal. He went on to live his life oblivious to the fact that he had negligently or deliberately caused the death of another human being. He was all too willing to bury the memories and lessons of Chappaquiddick Island. Those are my thoughts on the case of Ted Kennedy. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.